NFL free agency has officially begun, so as things break, we'll uh, give it to you first with analysis. In the meantime, what the Patriots have done so far this offseason. So far, Greg's a fan, and he's optimistic for the future. Just to reset his take. Again, a little bit of a different opinion than what you've heard here the last couple of days. Uh, specifically, let me just ask you about the individual moves, okay? Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to go in the order it's listed here. Maybe it's from most recent to the first. Either way. Anthony Jennings returning three years, 12 million thoughts. Uh, I like it. Um, good ascending player played really well this year. I like that move. Uche one year, 3 million. So um, I like it for the Patriots. And I, apparently according to reports, he had his reasons for coming back here that he, I do not believe that he turned down a big contract offer elsewhere to sign back here for one year and 3 million. I just don't believe that. No, I mean, he way. would be the first player in the history of the NFL to make that choice at this point in his career. I just don't believe it. No way. That's a lie. That is a blatant, outright lie. That's a lie. <laughs> I mean, it's good for the Patriots. I just don't understand it. Sarah, he, I don't understand sure. why he didn't get more money elsewhere. Like, he's a he's good. he's not that good. Well, he would fit on, like, a, you know, well, one but, of these teams, 4-3, just rush the passer say, type of team. Generally speaking, sacks get paid. Right. And you know, he had big sacks like last Jones. Two, two years ago, right? Like yeah, he had three last year. Right. The year before was 11 and a half, right? You put up sacks, you get paid in that league, generally speaking. But not this guy. No. We should he tell had you three so- last year. We should tell you something. Uh, Michael Wenu. Um, three years, 57. Whatever it is. Again, I'm not giving you the real money. That's just the headline money, but go ahead. Yeah. I, a, a little rich for me, but I like it. I mean, it gives them certainly a really good player at some offensive line position. I, You would look at his contract and think he's going to play tackle, um, which he has been training for, but I think it's a situation where the Patriots just, they, they're going to try to upgrade the room and then they'll sort out the best five when they get to camp. He's overpaid, but I'm not going to complain about that given what their offensive line has been. Kendrick yeah. Bourne and that completely Fugazi three-year $19 million deal. Yeah, I don't understand that deal. I love Kendrick. I'm glad he's here, and uh, but and, and I like the contract as far as um, you know. It's basically pay as you go, and he'll get what he earns coming back from the injury. But I, I would just like to reset the entire wide receiver room and just go like pepper the draft and and other things to upgrade the room. You know, it's fine. We'll see. So then, how do you feel about Hunter Henry? I like it. He was one of the guys that I wanted here. Uh, I would have considering franchising him if he was still on the franchise number um, just because they have nothing at the position. Bill left the cupboard bare. They had to get somebody. He's good, solid captain. Uh, I like it. Austin Hooper. Like it. Uh, I've always liked Hooper. He's a good player, has been in this system before. Um, a little bit of an upgrade over Pharaoh Brown. I would have been fine with Pharaoh Brown, uh, but Hooper's a good player. I liked Pharaoh Brown. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah. You know, uh, and what's interesting is I had forgotten he also played in Cleveland with Brissett and Van Pelt. You know, Hooper played with uh, or, you know, played under Van Pelt somewhere. I can't remember. It might, might have also been Cleveland. Yeah, okay, so yeah. Cleveland. But it's like, you know, Farrell Brown, and he was Farrell Brown was even a little cheaper, but Hooper probably projects as a better receiving option. I don't know. I like Farrell Brown. Uh, this Taki Taki guy. Like him. Uh, I've always liked him on film. He basically replaces Mac Wilson and gives them a coverage element at linebacker, a speedier coverage type, which they didn't really have. I don't think Mac Wilson was really good at that. He was more, his forte was more rushing the passer. I think uh, Taki Taki gives them more of a matchup coverage guy, which they have needed for a long time. Antonio Gibson. A uh, good player. I'm not going to go crazy about it. Uh, he, you know, he gives them a receiving option, can uh, win some matchups on the outside, a good wheel route type of player. Um, so he gives them a different element at running back, and I think that was needed. This is a serious question. It's going to sound like a wise-ass question. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. Can he block? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good blocker. Okora for? Uh, good, solid player. Gives you an option. I think he's similar to... You know, the Calvin Anderson move. Now, we never saw Calvin Anderson on the field because he had uh, physical issues. Um, But I think that uh, a core four is similar, can give you a lot of different options, and uh, has experience. And I think we'll upgrade the room. The release of Lawrence Guy. Uh, he could still play. I'll be interested to see where he went, where he goes. I, looking back on my numbers for this year, I was surprised at how he, how highly he ended up uh, graded in my system. I would have thought that he would have taken more of a step back. Um, but I, I think it was a situation where 
he didn't want to be here anymore at the number he was at. He didn't, really didn't want to be here last year, and they just sort of moved on. Uh, J.C. Jackson released, but uh, reportedly today might still be in their plans going forward. If it's a minimum type of deal deal where I can cut him at any point, in turn, including in camp, I'm fine with it, taking a flyer on him. Uh, anything more than that, if it's substantial, I'm not interested in. It, what's notable is that Mayo, when he talked to us at the Combine, uh, made some sort of reference about J.C. Jackson was not healthy last year, and he was hopeful that he was going to be more healthy this year. Can I interject here? Please. No, no, no. A thousand times no. They put this clear emphasis on culture and on attitude and character, and J.C. Jackson quit on them last year. And he's got kind of a bad reputation in terms of work ethic and stuff like that. The whole thing in, in, with the Chargers was a— He's like the Trent Brown of cornerbacks. Yeah, I don't— No, no. No, why are they even messing around? Well, it, no, it's it's funny when you're not making money anymore, how, in how many people get uh, uh, motivated to play. Sort of like Trent Brown with his one year here with Dante Scarnecchia, how but, good he was. But is the so, talent worth messing around? No. With that? Well, that's why it's got to be on short money. That you know, if he screws around, he he's not with the program. Boom, you're gone. Find someone else. No. Do you care about Adrian Phillips or Jalen Mills? No. Okay. Me neither. Mike Kosicki. No. Goodbye. Oh, thank God he's gone. He sucked here. That was a terrible signing. I mean, not that they paid him that much money, but I bet you he'll be half decent with Burrow. Devontae Parker, any shedding any tears there? No, good riddance. Mac Wilson, did you like him? Uh, I did. I was surprised at how uh, how far he came along. Credit to the coaching staff for developing him. I knew um, he really didn't want to come back here uh, initially, but um, things really worked out well for them last year. Tell you, the one thing Bill still did okay uh, at was develop slowly developing those linebackers. Like yep. like when Jelani Tavai gets here, you're like, this dude is nothing. He's a special team. And then he's actually, you notice him in the defense. He did it with Kyle Van Noy. He did it with Tavai. Mac, uh, Mac Wilson, you know, it's a little something there. You know, Bill really, I think, buys low on those guys and lets them marinate. And they often turn into a little something. Tavai was, I thought, one of their better players last year. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Trent Brown, Riley Reef, Zeke Elliott. Does Zeke Elliott have a have a place on this team? I don't think so. I think um, you know they're getting younger. Zeke played really, really well last year. He was one of their best players over the course of the season. I, if I'm him, I'm looking for a contender to go to because I still think he can he can help them. Here's someone that might be a very nice person and a hardworking kid, and I don't mean to really disrespect him, but miles bryant needs to get off of my tv screen i agree I, I can't i just can't you know tune in every sunday I and watch miles him bryant. getting torched i'm sure he's a nice i kid. think he's a good i think he's a good player you Again, want him he, back i do mm -hmm. he just he gives you backups at a, a at a bunch of different spots and you need those guys of course you want him back you want to suck again <laughs> Greg is like Greg and Murray, totally okay sucking. No, let's go four and thirteen. No, they're like embrace the suck, run it back. I, I mean, look you, forward you, you, to you, you say and suck. You say suck for less. These guys are like, yeah, we suck. Embrace the suck. That's what these guys are doing. Right, keep the suck. Acceptance is the price of freedom. The tra not and not on sports radio. It's not baby. Uh, the transition tag for Kyle Duggar finally. Um, I. I I think it was a good move on both sides. I think Kyle's going to get more on that than he would if he was a free agent. And I I don't mind it in terms of – I read it as the two sides did not see the value uh, close. And so the Patriots said, fine, you know, we'll go ahead. Go out and prove your market, and we'll pay it. But why, this is what we think your value Right. Why, why do they have to do it with the formal tag versus a handshake like they've done in the past? Um. That's still the part I'm just hung up on. It's like the Pats do this, or used to, and a lot, a lot of teams do. I think it's pretty common. Just like, go see what you can get, come back to us, we'll match. And you if would... not, you'll have that other deal in your back pocket. Maybe you... they were just afraid that he was going to bolt for, say, nicer weather or something like that, you and asked they put that a placeholder you, on him. You asked that rhetorically because you know the answer, which is he wants hot <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. That, that, Or you're not on good terms with them. Or... No, like Calvin Ridley, he wants to go somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, w w whatever it is, it's not a good story. You know, it's like, I mean, you may end up keeping the player. I don't know if it will be because of it. I, I still just, you know, the mechanics of it to me are just what confuse me. There's no practical. It's just you can do the same thing with a handshake. Now, if you're not on handshake terms, then that's, I guess, why you would do it. So now you're bringing a guy kind of against his will or he's going to be bent out of shape or something. I don't know. It's just 
not a good story, not and not one that I told. Totally- well, I, I don't I, that I even get. I understand what you're saying, and the t- transition tag isn't used a lot. But normally, when it's used, is when both sides are far apart on value, and the team, you know, puts a placeholder on them and says, "Go ahead, go find your deal." Now, I understand. I you know, I heard Bert talking about like the seven day window and stuff like that. I understand that, but that doesn't preclude a team saying, calling the Patriots and be like, "Are you interested in moving Duggar?" And then you know, and then they can work that out. Uh, aside from the tag. It's the opposite of Lena's hallmark. He wants out and they're making him stay. <laughs> yeah, you can't is. leave. Uh, so if they strike out on Calvin Ridley, give me a receiver that you would want. How do you feel about Mike Williams? His name is going to come up. He was just released from the Chargers. Let me just tell you, uh, when I watched the Chargers over the years, I always feared Keenan Allen much more than Mike Williams. To me, it wasn't even close. But yeah. your thoughts? Um, Mike Williams is very talented when he's on the field and healthy, he is dynamic. Justin Herbert was always better when Mike Williams was on the field. The problem with him is the injuries. And, you know, if it's short money and short years and he wants a prove-it deal, absolutely. Nah, I think Hollywood it? Brown might be a backup option, but really there's there's not much on the free agent market this year as far as wide receivers. And even Calvin Ridley, now, you know, he had the, the suspension – he entered the league when he was 24. He's going to be 30 this year. So I'll be interested to see at the end of the day, like how many years, how much money are the Patriots really willing to to offer? But you can make the argument to do it that he's not really 30. He's more like 27 or 28 in terms of uh, the miles on him. Understood. Good player, not a great one, but I'll take Ridley over Williams. Williams right. is never on the field. Yeah. It's hurt a lot. And I, I, I he feels to me, uh, and I just we could be totally wrong, but is he a real speed threat? I mean, yes. Yes? Yeah, he's he big is. and fast. So he's, he's big, big. So, like, I see the size, and I just, I don't know. So, but, again, that's just me. My eyes are playing tricks on me or whatever. Like yeah, Allen's the guy. Yeah, that I always thought. Allen's a stud. He'll catch the ball in traffic. He'll take yeah, a pounding. I love Keenan Allen, but, but he's, he's t- old. He is old. He's that's, got a lot of miles. That's, he had a great year last year, but, but he is. He's taken a ton of hits. Okay. 